Good morning, welcome to Korea, the beautiful city of Seoul in Korea. And I'm going to be showing you around today. He just caught a fish. They have these amazing herons here that just live on this canal. And I'm going to be showing you not just this canal, but the highlights of our time here because my girlfriend invited me to come for a week to escape the brutal April summer heat in Thailand. We have brought our jackets and we have brought our sense of adventure and I'm going to be highlighting a very important market here, Guangjiang Market. It's right next to our hotel. I'll show you in there because it's a great place to get breakfast, a great place to immerse yourself in the culture of Seoul. First things first, let's get up to the market and uh, let's get some breakfast and some coffee and we'll have some traditional Korean food as we do so. So sit down and relax and enjoy Seoul. If you look behind me, you'll see, even though it's quite early in the morning, one particular stall has a very, very long queue that wraps around the entire stall. It's probably 20, 30 people waiting. The reason is, is because that particular one was the one that got featured in the episode of uh, Street Food Netflix. And because humans are humans, if it's been on the TV, that's the one that we want to be eating at. But I'll tell you, me and my girlfriend, we've been to this market every day. We've been here in the evening and in the mornings, getting our breakfast and <laughs> most evenings like a late night snack because this market is incredible. And look, we are not one to queue, especially when every single store here has an equally delicious menu. They're all selling the same things. They're all selling the same things as this. Noodle soup, dumpling soup, dumplings, and you know, different variations of other types of noodle dishes. And every store here pretty much does the same thing. And they're all equally delicious, but this one has the queue because it was on Netflix. Um, but we're not gonna be queuing because I'm not gonna queue for breakfast, especially when right behind me, this lady here, busy at work and making some dumplings, only has one poor fella here having his breakfast, so I'm gonna join him. And we're gonna order exactly what you can have over there, but without the queue. So yeah, most of these stores have the same situations. Um, we've got the chopped noodles, yeah. the dumplings inside, just plain noodles. These are the handmade knife cut noodles, just the noodle soup. And then they have other ones with wontons. Yeah, number three, dumpling soup, 7001. So there's two types of dumplings that you can have. You can have just pork or just kimchi, but I like to have a mix just because you get, yeah, more well-rounded experience. And it's fun, like she's just making the dumplings right here. Late night as well, when you get here about 10 p.m. and all the stores are closing up for the night, these ladies still don't go to bed. They still don't go home. They then roll out the dough and they hand make the next day's dumplings. The other night I had raw octopus here because my girlfriend, she's Thai and she loves seafood. And one of the delicacies in this market is raw octopus. And they literally grab a baby octopus out of a tank, chop it up and serve it on a dish. Um, they drizzle it in soy sauce and some sesame seed. And I tried it because, you know, when in Rome, uh, but one of the suction cups like sucked my inside of my cheek. <laughs> so I was not having it. But my Thai girlfriend ate the whole dish. She loved it. Um, wasn't for me though. Anyway, enough of the rant. People want to sit next to me. So let's get our breakfast on. I'll show you around a bit more. We'll try a few more dishes and we'll get coffee as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, breakfast is served. So this is the dumpling soup and it's served with kimchi on the side. Actually, kimchi is self-serve. You can just grab it from this shelf of deliciousness in front of me. And then I think this is black pepper or white pepper, I'm not quite sure. I'll put a little bit in there as well because I do quite like a spicy breakfast soup. And then you've got two flavors of dumpling, the pork dumpling and the kimchi dumplings. So let me just try that soup broth first. So comforting. This is real Korean mummy home cooking. But out here on the street. Of course, if you're not into spice, just don't put the kimchi in, don't put the chili radish. 
and it won't be that spicy at all. And they have vegetables in here, Korean mm. eggplant and carrots. Mm. So this is one of the kimchi dumplings by itself. <laughs> there are certain times when I'm traveling and I'm having certain dishes where I'm just speechless. Mm. If you're like me and Korean food is not up there in your top 10 cuisines, then come to Korea because <laughs> you're going to change your mind very quickly. Like, I'm normally not a big fan of kimchi, to be honest. But the way they make it here, it's just, oh, it's just so fresh, crunchy and spicy. It's going up my nose. <coughs> As you can see, this bowl of dumpling soup is awakening the senses, which is great because it's early in the morning and I need waking up. Spicy, delicious. Thank you very much. Okay, let's go grab a coffee. Okay, the stalls are starting to fill up now. Even though I've just eaten. <laughs> Sorry, I could eat again. On this entrance, which spits you out at the uh, canal, the first stall on the left is the best coffee shop. I've walked around, there's only a couple of ones. This one's the best one. Obviously, as you can tell, this market attracts a lot of people, tourists, Korean locals who just want a delicious breakfast, and a lot of YouTubers. There was um, some Russian dudes filming right behind me with big fancy equipment. But to be honest, and this is just a little message to anyone who has a YouTube channel, be, be a little bit switched on. Like they put, their tech, they put their big camera bag on the bench which takes up two seats of the ladies shop. They're there for 10 minutes. They're still doing take after take of practicing whatever they're doing. And the lady next to me, the woman who owns the shop and makes the dumplings, asked them to move the bag because then people can sit down and they were like, oh, one minute, one minute. And it's five minutes later and they've still got their camera bag on the bench blocking up lady's uh, restaurant and she's too polite to shout at them and throw it away. Okay, we have a nice ice Americano. So let's continue. Let's see what else we can find and let's see what else we can try. So another thing that you should try when you come to this market, especially if you don't really fancy noodles or a soup, try bimibap. Bimibap is a Korean dish which is served on rice and on top they have chopped vegetables. Sometimes you can get it with meat, but these girls here, they don't do meat, they just do egg. So I've actually asked for two eggs and then it's served in a hot stone bowl, which again, they heat over the flames and then you just get a fork and a spoon so there's no chopsticks this one's very easy to eat and um, you just mix it up like this and underneath these gherkins and morning glory and carrots and bits of kimchi and other bits of korean vegetable goodness underneath is the rice and there's some lentils in here as well i can see and you just mix it up. There is a little bit of um, sauce at the bottom as well, which the more you mix up means that it will turn color to a nice reddish. I'm not sure if it's gonna be spicy. I've never actually tried this variant before. So let's give it a try. A bit of the egg, better get the vegetables and some of the rice. It smells really fragrant. Mm. Very good. Quite spicy actually, but very, very hot, really comforting, 
There's a lot of crunch in the vegetables. We've got the cooked rice, some bean sprouts. This is delicious. Yeah, one orange and grapefruit. Orange and mix together. Okay. Yes. Yeah. This place is incredible. It's uh, just a fresh orange juice place, but they have these delicious oranges, and they squeeze four of them, and then on the top they slice open a grapefruit and squeeze a grapefruit on top, and the orange, and then that tartness, that sharp acidity, and the uh, sourness from the grapefruit on top just makes the orange juice next level. Okay, so this is the orange and grapefruit juice, 5,000 Korean won, and I'm getting pushed behind me. <laughs> it's a tight squeeze in this market because, unbelievably, I think before it got super popular with Netflix, uh, this was a proper, and it still is a proper working market. There's a fish market, they sell Korean snacks here, there's all sorts of typical market going on, and so they have motorbikes coming and going, people delivering, going out on missions to deliver fresh fish to restaurants. So coupled with everybody being here together, it can be a bit hectic, um, but this is delicious by the way. And I just want to quickly mention behind me here, because I did try this the other day, but I'm not going to bother this morning uh, because I didn't really like it, but it's very popular. It's the mung bean pancakes and fried in oil and they look great, but I just thought they were kind of like a, a dry hash brown and I was trying to look for ketchup <laughs> and they, they were looking at me like, this is Korea. Um, so it wasn't really for me, um, but I've heard it's very popular and they sell them everywhere. Hello. Hi. Yep, let's do it, let's vlog together. Hello. See? Hello. <laughs> She's looking at my phone and I'm thinking, yeah, this is the lazy way of vlogging. I, just, I put my big camera away because everybody was looking at me like, and I got a little bit self-conscious. So as you can see, this market is alive with traditional, real, authentic Korean street food. And I would love to try some more on camera, but I'm just going to go grab, I think, one of those pizza cakes because there's so much food here. I can never eat it all alone. I'm not quite sure what this place is, but it's just opened at 11 o'clock and there was already a queue of people waiting. It looks like a puff pastry. But then there's a sign saying it's called a crazy pizza pie. I might get one to take out on my adventures today with my girlfriend. Because I have no clue what it is, but it must be good if there's a big long queue of Korean people. That's a good sign, right? Can I get one takeaway? Okay, Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so as you can see, there is a lot of food. Way too much food for me to eat and way too much food for me to show you in this video. I'll take this home and I'll share this with my girlfriend and I'll let you know how it was. It's been a really nice break to come to Korea and a really nice change of temperature, climate and culture. And put it on your bucket list, guys. Korea, specifically Seoul. It's a foodie heaven and it's fun and it's, yeah a great, great destination to travel to, for sure. What would you give it out of 10? Um, 
um, for the taste, I would give like six, something <laughs> special. Just a puff and pie. Savage. <laughs> chicken skewer not only is it really really spicy but there's two quite funny things about this dining experience on the streets you have to eat next to this cardboard because the cardboard catches all the uh, spicy sauce that drips down the second fun thing is once you eat a section of the chicken watch what happens